you can say it first. You can steal mine, I guess. Do your nails make a noise when you do this? Because mine is just finger skin not making any noise. Oh, I did these nails myself, by the way. That's cool. So if you want to come to Salon Lynn. That was like such a flex with your ring. Oh, these nails? <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to Good Vibes FC. I'm Sam Lewis, coming to you from the Women's Game World Headquarters in Vermont. And I'm Lynn, coming to you from sunny, sunny New Jersey, finally. Oh, my gosh. It got sunny here recently, too. I'm so relieved because it's been so rainy. It's been rainy and windy. The other day at training, it was, like, sunny, and then we saw this giant cloud. And when I say it was torrential downpour... Juan screaming at us to like finish in the box and I was like Juan I can't even see the ball like, yeah I can't see it yeah I I'm, I'm you're gonna miss me with that one coach um <laughs> Lynn I have to tell you what I've been doing since it's been so rainy I've really? been watching Survivor season 46 because two people in my life one being Jay our producer the other being Bethany Balser friendly's guest I'm literally so obsessed with it Lynn like I haven't watched Survivor since I was in high school and I would watch w- with my parents when it came out and I'm sitting there watching and my jaw is dropping every episode. Like, it's the best show on TV. What's so great about it? I think the deception and the surprise. And now that I'm kind of, like, in the, like, um, content creating game, I, like, kind of really understand that the producers do such a good job, like, making you uncertain who's actually getting voted out. Like, they mm. they just ask all the right questions. So I'm like, here I am being, like, the production value is so good. <laughs> Do you think you could do it? Be a producer or be on Survivor? Both, I guess, but be on Survivor. No, I don't. Well, you remember how good I was at that game, that, yes. that Mafia game? Yes. Yeah. So maybe I maybe I could. I think people assume that I'm all sunshine and rainbows, but really, I don't know if people have never heard of the Mafia game, but it's that card game where like somebody's the Mafia, but you have to like try to convince everybody else that it's not you. And then you like tap somebody on the shoulder and then they like a village person dies etc etc yeah anyways you try to like vote people off and you're trying to find the mafia and sam was really deceiving and won multiple times and it was just like everybody's like i don't know if i can trust you anymore i know and i was like well sorry that i won like one too many (laughs) times i guess oh that was fun i love that mafia game anyways if you guys aren't watching survivor (laughs) Please watch it with me. It's literally so good. I'm so obsessed with it. It's all I think about and all I talk about. I love that for you. What's new with you? I'm going to the draft. The WNBA draft? The WNBA draft. So I'm really excited about that. I've never been to a draft besides ours, which was back in 2015 and really small and pretty terrible. (laughs) So I'm really excited to see like just the growth of women's sports. And I think it's going to be a really fun night. No, I freaking love that. What are you wearing? Well, I'm undecided between two outfits. I have like both are Marley's sweaters. So either a vest sweater of his or a pink oversized sweater with like long crew socks and some loafers. Oh, my God. Cute. I'm voting pink. Yeah. Okay. Well, Marley's out there in the streets right now, and he's wearing pink pants, so that would match him. So oh, maybe I'll do that. That would be cool. Um, are you going to get to meet any of the players? I'm not sure. I we Well, first of all, it was really hard to get tickets, so we had to go through a team sponsor to get tickets, and I hope so. I freaking hope so. I'm going to say, it's me. Caitlin, it's me. Do you think Caitlin Ooh. Clark is going to get drafted first? The hottest take here. <laughs> I, good vibes FC. I think Caitlin Clark will go number one. Wow. Well, you heard it here first, everybody. Predicting it here first. Yeah. Other than predicting the number one pick in the WNBA draft in 2024, today on this podcast, the NWSL is back. And as is the one and only Lynn Williams back playing for Gotham. So we were going to hear all about that. Chelsea are now 0 for 2 in cups. And the Champions League is looming. Their first leg of the semifinals coming up this weekend. Plus, we're going to tell you everything that you need to watch this weekend. Spoiler alert, it's a lot of stuff. And we got an email from Bethany F. about chain restaurants that you guys are really going to want to stick around and hear the answer to. But first, I need to let you know that today we are the self-anointed highway to hell and we are the champions of women's soccer because 
Isn't the women's game just like a classic rock song? It just makes you want to scream all the lyrics into a microphone as loud as you can. And we are the champions because, well. Oh, my gosh. We see Lynn's championship ring. Lynn, you guys just got those last night at the ceremony after the game. How was that? It was so good. It was fun. I wish that we were able to like celebrate with the fans last year. So it was yeah. like a moment that we could celebrate with them this year. And Gotham slash Sky Blue fans have been waiting for this moment for literally a decade. So it was really cool and really exciting. And the ring is awesome. I loved it. Oh my gosh. I love that. And I love that for Gotham. You guys had your home opener last night versus Kansas City. And it ended up finishing one to one. You all had played your Challenge Cup at home. But this is your like official NWSL mm -hmm. home opener. What was the atmosphere like before the match? It was like such a nice day out. Well, surprisingly, right before the game, it started raining. And I was like, no, oh, not again, not again. And then after the game, it rained. So right, just beautiful, sunny day <laughs> for game. Just 90 minutes of sun. Literally. But it was awesome. I think there was 10,000 people there. The crowd was incredible. They were like people were showing yellow cards. They had bat ears like it was just an aw awesome, awesome, awesome um, atmosphere. And I'm just hoping that we get more and more fans because it's it's great to play in front of people. Was Eli Manning there? Yes. Did you see him? We've met him a couple times. though. Oh, cool. I saw his video to Patrick Mahomes about um, the championship rings and I thought it was very funny. <laughs> I thought it was funny, too. I, I love that they're getting involved, too. I think that that's how you spread the word about women's sports and get more coverage and watching men support us as well. Like, it's, I just thought it was fun. OK, so the game game begins mm -hmm. and the two teams game plans start to become apparent. You guys, Gotham, were like really passing focused with your build up. And then Kansas City, honestly, just looking really dangerous on the counterattack. Tem Wachuinga and her speed. Oh, my gosh. They did just that in the 17th minute, a forward pass finds the Malawian standout, Tem Wachuinga. She gets in alone on goal and kind of chips it over Cassie Miller. We need to identify, Lynn, this goal. This goal makes it one to nothing for the current. And this goal, as a classic rock song, this goal was like Thunderstruck by ACDC. You guys are going to see a theme here. I'm going ACDC a lot today. My dad loved ACDC. My dad loves ACDC. I don't know why I said loved faster. Still with us. <laughs> My dad loves ACDC, and so I feel like growing up, he would, like, put in a little ACDC CD. That was a lot of letters in a row. And then we'd just, like, kind of rock out. So, anyways, Tam Wachowinga's goal makes it one to nothing to the current. Lynn, how fast is she? Like, is she the fastest person in the world? Did you see, like, you saw this goal close up. Could you just tell how fast she was? In the world, probably not. <laughs> I would say she's fast. I honestly don't know. I feel like it's hard for me to, like decipher how fast people are because you're so fast yourself exactly yeah sorry to make you talk about that your team goes in for <laughs> halftime down a goal and it's your home opener and you know that you're getting your championship rings at the end of the game and like a celebration ceremony so you're going into halftime being like all right what are we going to do what do we have to change what's the locker room feel like at halftime yeah, we just talked about how our pressure on the ball wasn't good enough and our ability to just defend and want to win. Like, I think that that's the difference between the first half and the second half. It just looked like when we would lose it, we would just immediately get it right back and, and the wanting to push for a goal. And I think that maybe we gave Kansas City a little bit too much respect in the first half. And we knew, obviously, they've been at the top of the table and they've been scoring goals like crazy. But we are also a good team and we haven't really been letting in goals. So I think the the message was this is a non-negotiable for us is getting pressure on the ball. Like, let's not worry about the person on the opposite side of the field if the ball is way over yeah. there. Like, the, we have to get the ball first. So I was really proud of the group's ability to turn it around. Yeah, you guys definitely did. At halftime, Crystal Dunn and Jenna Nicewanger, both back from U.S. Women's National Team Camp, subbed into the game. Six minutes into the second half, Gotham wins a corner. Yasmin mm -hmm. Ryan loops one into the far post where Esther Gonzalez finds it and heads this like beautiful arcing ball into the back of the net, like far post. And you just kind of see it like going right over A.D. Franch's head, the goalkeeper for Kansas City. There was just no chance that she had of saving it because Esther was so wide open. This goal from Esther makes it one to one. And this goal was like a classic rock song, Lynn. What do you have for us? It was like back in the New York groove. Yes. 
Because exactly why? Yes, Esther and Gotham are back in the New York slash New Jersey groove. I love that. And then the best thing all day, the best thing that happened to me all weekend happened. Lynn Williams subs onto the field. She is back. Lynn, how does it feel to be back out there after having missed the last several weeks? Yeah, it feels incredible. Obviously, this injury wasn't like a major injury. I just read something, though, and it said 35 days. And I was like, holy crap, that's kind of like, I know it doesn't feel like a long time, but it's kind of a long time. It's like a month. Yeah, though, but like a month is like long. Like a month feels long. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it did feel long. I am very sorry, but I'm glad you're back. Anyways, I was really excited. I know this wasn't a major injury, but I feel like you never really know like when your last game is going to be. So I just like was enjoying being back out there and playing and running around with my friends. And so I felt like it was a win in itself just to even see the field. So I, I was really excited to play. I feel rusty, though, but it was nice. Well, you don't look rusty. You looked fast. I saw you sprinting, charging down the field. And I was like, she is just fastest woman alive. Apparently, I'm giving out that compliment a lot. <laughs> so who's the fastest woman, Sam? <laughs> The second half was, yeah, like you said, Lynn, kind of all Gotham. In the dying minutes, you had one last attack on a set piece. Ball goes up for a corner, and then the ref blows the whistle before you guys could even take your corner. What was that about? I have no idea. That was so bizarre. But I was like, okay, so you're telling me every single time the game is ending and somebody gets a corner, I should just fake an injury, and then the game will be over? Hmm. Like, what? You might be onto something. (laughs) That was like... The most bizarre thing I've ever seen. And it was so just dissatisfying. Yeah. I was like, what? Everybody was just standing there for a good minute afterwards being like, are we sure? Did you mean to blow the whistle? That's so annoying. It was so annoying. It really riled me up. Yeah. Geez. Well, riled you right up. You guys had your, like we talked about, you had your ring ceremony right after the game. And you showed us your ring already. We'd love to see it. Lynn, how does this ring compare to any other rings you might have in your life oh my other ones this one says 11 11 oh my god 11 11 oh, make a wish that that's when we played oh. and williams <laughs> and i can't show you the bottom part because maybe we'll get sued this ring is better than the other ones that i have in the design in the <laughs> ability <Size. laughs> in the size <laughs> I feel like not just the ring itself, but every championship, just like you, you never know how many games you're going to play. You never know if you're ever going to get back to a championship. So having something that like is memorabilia basically from that game, I just think it's like so incredible to say like one, I've been there. Um, It feels like so many times, but every single one is so special. So and every time I look at this ring, I think of like that moment but I think of the whole entire season and the people that I was there with and like I said you just never know if you were ever you're ever going to get back to a championship game or a championship moment so it's pretty special and pretty incredible yeah I feel like last year for you was you like left Kansas City and you had been injured for a year and you like joined this new Mm -hmm. team and you like had such a great year like early in the year You were scoring all these goals. Then you made the World Cup roster. You came back. You helped Gotham win a championship. And I feel like for you, it was this like, I am such a valuable asset to any team in this league and to then win the whole thing. And for me to remember that year for you as this year of like, I don't know, I just feel like you proved not to anybody else, but you just like showed everybody what was up and you showed everybody that you have our like this ability to be part of a winning culture everywhere you go. Thanks, Sam. It's just such a different feeling. Well, first of all, I think that all the other rings I have with you and that group of girls that we had basically built something from the ground up being in Western New York. We obviously won there and then went to North Carolina and won twice. So it was like such a different feeling of like, I have been with the same yeah. women for from the beginning where this one was it was definitely a different feeling of so much uncertainty in the whole entire season because I feel like in North Carolina I was like oh we're gonna win yeah like from day one I was like <laughs> yeah. like so much cocky confidence I don't know if you felt that way but I was like we're gonna win and in this one it was just like I was walking into the unknown and and then through the season you start to gain that confidence and say like you know what we're gonna do this but it was it was very different 
Well, I'm very excited to see you continue with Gotham. I, You know I um, pinned you to be MVP of the league, so no pressure, but I just have all my money riding on you. Just pay off everybody, Sam, for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, elsewhere in the league, the weekend kicked off with Dash versus the Washington Spirit. The Dash came out and scored in the very first minute of the game, but... Then they couldn't really do much after that, and the Spirit would score three. Brittany Ratcliffe's late goal was, like, especially gorgeous. She kind of dribbled in from the corner of the box, and the defender dropped off, and she, like, dribbled by somebody else and bends it in far post with her left foot. Such a beautiful goal. In terms of classic rock songs, it's giving... You really got me by the kinks. You really got me now. You got me so I Do you agree? I agree. The goal was beautiful. So good. So, so good. And it gave the spirit a lot of momentum. I do hope that someday somebody cuts all of us, every time we sing on this podcast, cuts together into like one like super song. I hope that on this podcast, they start off with you singing and then they just trail it into the actual song. Like you Mm -hmm. kick off the song. (laughs) So no pressure. Okay, perfect. So the Spirit Dash game finished 3-1 to one Washington. And we also heard yesterday from ESPN's Jeff Kasuf that there are reports that Dash marquee player Maria Sanchez wants a trade after agreeing to what at the time was an NWSL record contract earlier this year, $1.5 million over three years with a fourth-year option. Maria Sanchez came to the Dash on loan in 2021. She signed with the Dash in 2022. So she's been there for almost three seasons now. It's also important to note that in that time, the Dash have had five different coaches since the start of the 2022 season. They've conceded 10 goals in the last four games, and they are only on four points in an 11th place. It's not really a great start to the season for the Houston team. I, if I'm correct, I think that they've also only made the playoffs once in their whole stint as a team, and they lost in the first round, which I think just speaks in general to like where the club is at. So this is swinging into our Olipop Gut Check of the Week, brought to you by our friends at Olipop. If you're Maria Sanchez, what are you looking for here? Like This trade request has leaked. It's out there. Is there any way that Houston can come back and kind of like make things right in terms of keeping her around? Or is Maria just like, I need to get out of here, trade me? What are your initial thoughts? I would love to know. If it's me and I'm in my third year with the team, I feel like I'm missing something. Like, obviously, she just signed a couple of months ago this record-breaking deal and seemed happy to be there for three to four years the historical lack of success is something I would have wanted to be thinking about this whole time. They do have one challenge cup to their name, but I think if I'm Maria, the idea now that the trade request is public, I feel like I have to be pretty set on leaving. Like I think it has an impact on your teammates when they hear that it kind of has an impact like that's larger than anything that the dash could really do to just be like, please stay. We're going to fix X, Y, and Z. I don't know if the Dash can let her go. I mean, she's such a valuable player. She signed this big deal. I think this deal would go with her. And what team right now is capable of paying that? I'm not really sure. But I think if I'm Maria right now, I'm like, there's not much that could save this. And I'm probably really looking like I have to get out. Yeah, I was actually thinking the same thing in terms of our teams even – able to take her if they want her with yeah. the salary that she has attached to her. I think, first of all, it's incredible that she was able to sign that. But it feels like a very quick turnaround. I'm wondering, was something promised to her that is now in the last four games not being reached? That's the only thing I could think of. We obviously don't know the ins and outs of what's happening in Houston. but yeah. It feels, I don't know the word, but interesting knowing like how quick. It's not like she signed this deal years ago. It it would it's fairly new. So Yeah, it's like what changed in just the past four months? Yeah. And was it that drastic? Or was it a promise that, okay, I'm going to sign on the potential and she hasn't been seeing that, that potential happen mm. or that change happen and the steps for change to happen? So I'm interested to see how how that's going to play out. But I do think that your point of making it public really changes things. And I think it changes the dynamics of things, knowing 
your teammates now know that you you want the trade. Yeah. The media knows. Other teams know. Looking at as like a, a team that's going to play them, I'm I'm thinking, oh, is Houston not a team that's together? So if if we mm. get one goal, are they going to like crumble easily? You know, like I I think those are things that you have to think about once you put things out into the media. I actually think that's an interesting point, Lynn, because I did notice when Brittany Ratcliffe scored that goal against them, they very quickly conceded another goal Mm -hmm. in a game that they had been tied for a long time. They then let up two quick goals in succession, and that shows like kind of a drop off in focus when things go wrong. We're going to keep you all posted on trade updates, especially this one with Maria Sanchez and the dash as the trade window closes on April 19th and it won't reopen again until August. So stay tuned to our Twitter at Women's Game MIB for updates on that. That was our Olipop gut check of the week. We love you, Olipop. Thank you so much. Okay, we have a few more games from this weekend in the NBCL. We asked last week if the Red Hot Chicago Red Stars could keep it up, but this week without Mal Swanson, who was rested as a precaution after international duty, <clears throat> they lacked any attacking bite, registering just one shot on goal. Angel City honestly weren't much better having scored on a lucky Chicago own goal following some chaos in the box. But Angel City did get their first win of the season 1-0. to Lynn, do you remember last year when Chicago kept getting their goals by the other team mm-hmm. scoring own goals? Yeah, it was like the running joke was own goal. I, was like, their best player. <laughs> was their best player, which is <laughs> LOL. I know. That was so funny. But Chicago were the the victims of own goal this time. This isn't a classic rock song, but how can you not call their goal, Oops, I Did It Again? I know. In reverse, though. Yeah, I know. Because it happened to them. (laughs) Oops, I Did It Again in reverse. I know. Very unfortunate. And we're so sorry to make light of what's just really a crippling, crippling thing when it happens to you. Have you ever scored an own goal? I scored it as soon as you said that. I got like chills down my spine because one time at a U.S. Women's National Team camp, it was like starters versus non-starters. Obviously, I was a non-starter and I like scored an own goal on like a corner kick and I just like literally headed it into the goal and everybody was like this and I was like, what just happened? And Ashlyn Harris was like, you just headed it into our goal. And I was like, oh. Was I'm it so like sorry. an own goal banger? Like, honestly, like it, nobody else would have scored it. <laughs> have you ever scored an own goal? Uh, shockingly, no. I have I have accidentally like laid it perfectly, though, for somebody to score. So like I've had an own assist multiple times. Own assists are tough, too. Those are really tough. But no, I have not scored an own goal. Oh, bless. It bless is bad. Up. Okay, this brings us to the Pacific Northwest. When it rains, it pours. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry for that pun. Both Seattle and Portland stay near the bottom of the table with losses. North Carolina played against the Portland Thorns. In that game, North Carolina went up early on a corner kick that Tyler Lucy shot in from the top of the box to score against her former club, Portland. She was unmarked near the top of the box on this corner kick. This goal was like... All by myself. From Eric Carmen. Can you sing it? No. No, I cannot. All by myself. <laughs> I wasn't going to become a victim of the the play and song because they're going to edit this and you keep going and then they're going to they're gonna play the song after you start it. Anything for good vibes, Lynn. Anything for the show. Okay, this is my big question for you. Something I always hear, and I heard it on this goal, from like the commentators and like from the fans is... Kind of this expression like she's left unmarked or like she's wide Mm. open. And I want to talk about this from a player perspective because a lot of teams these days, this started really a few years ago for me with the national team. You're playing like a more zonal system when you're defending a corner kick. You're not just Mm. matched up uh, man for man, woman for woman, 11 v 11 on a corner kick. Like you're set up in a zone. So kind of saying she's left totally unmarked isn't really how to describe what's happening. And I just wanted to have you like weigh in here. Yeah, it, it's that isn't what's happening at all. I think that most teams have a mixed system of you have some zone players and you have some man markers. Usually the man markers are their best aerial presence. Sometimes we call them bumpers. It's not necessarily a man mark. So what's supposed to happen is you mark said person until they get into the zone. And then that zone player is supposed to attack the ball attack the ball in their zone, quote unquote. It's not that somebody was 
Tyler Lucy's mark and was supposed to run around the box with her and follow her every right. single move. It's that she, I'm assuming that they were supposed to be her bumper until she got into the zone, said zone. And that zone person just either switched off or the bumper didn't do a good job of disrupting her run and delaying her to get to that zone. So, yeah, it's not necessarily like, oh, she's just unmarked. No, she just the person just didn't attack that zone. Yeah, I think it was really clear on Esther's goal in your game mm -hmm. as well. Because she was so wide open, but I imagine that it was somebody's responsibility to, like you said, track the flight of the ball and like backpedal to the end of their zone, which would have been further back post to win that header. And it, yeah. that's that's what I think the breakdown was, was the zone not adjusting to the flight of the ball. Not that Esther's marker lost her. It, it's a kind of a different issue. It's just like a very, I think, tactical thing that has evolved over the past couple of years. And I wanted to talk about it a little bit on here. It's so easy to get picked and and lose yeah. your person. So you can't you can't just say, oh, everybody's just going to be man for man. And you're like, oh, but I got picked. And yeah. that is happening more as the game is evolving. So um, I'm happy that we had dis we have discussed it here today. As am I. Vibes. As am I. <laughs> just a, an encyclopedia of information in classic rock songs. Tyler Lucy's finish was really great. Went right in from the top of the box. And then Tyler Lucy adds on another assist on a shot cross situation that was headed home by Haley Hopkins. You know, Lynn, when you shoot, you, I feel like you used to make fun of me for this all the time. Like sometimes I would shoot and it would go out for a throw in and it would be like, okay, that was like really way off. This was actually sick because Tyler was shooting I think, but then she just got an assist out of it instead of a defensive throw in. <laughs> yeah, I think that she even said that it was not a it wasn't a cross. But if if you were to shoot that ball, I'm going to let you know right now, if that was you, I probably would not put my head in front of that because you have a vicious shot, vicious, vicious shot. So I feel like you can only do that with some people. <laughs> Thanks, I would have been like <laughs> not my life Duh. today. Absolutely not. <laughs> I know. Very brave of Haley Hopkins and a nice goal to really seal the deal for the courage. Not for lack of trying. Portland really just couldn't catch a break. They ended up losing two to nothing. Um, Becky Sauerbrunn will be back with us next week where hopefully we will talk then about how the Thorns have turned it around. But last up at Bay FC, the rain and Bay closed out the weekend on Sunday night with a thriller. It finished three to two to Bay. The rain scored first on an own goal. That own, own goal, goal strikes Real, again. Yeah, own goal strikes again. But Bay came back. They actually had back-to-back -back goals in the 55th and 57th minutes, the second of which was an absolute laser show from Alex Loera. And we need a classic rock song to describe Alex Loera's goal. Do you have one? I love rock and roll. <laughs> Give me one line, Lynn. Put a little dime in my jukebox, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that. It was just like such a banger. And like, she put a dime in the top corner, if you know what I mean, Lynn. I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say, but that was good. That was good by you. That game, yeah, it kept going back and forth. Seattle equalized in the 83rd with a Bethany Balser goal. And then to kill the game in the 87th minute, Joelle Anderson shot a ball in towards the net and Alana Cook like kind of deflected it into the back of her own net. But Bay FC comes away with the win, even though all the goals were a little bit all over the place, except again for that I love rock and roll goal. That one was nasty. The big takeaway from this one for me is that the Nigerian Oshwala and Zambian Kundanaji, these two players, this African duo, they're just like pretty nasty. Like they look so dangerous on quick counterattack opportunities. They're both really skillful on the dribble and they just keep creating lots of chances throughout the whole game. The rain struggled though, Lynn. And I wanted to ask, could that be because Gotham stole two of their best players in Emily Sonnet and Rose Lavelle. Can we call it stealing? We didn't steal them. <laughs> we gently guided them mm. to to the the better side. Mm. Well, right now, you guys are the better <laughs> side. You are higher in the table. Okay, let's take a little transatlantic cruise. NWSL <laughs> is behind us. We're going to jolly old England. This weekend, we had two knockout matches in the Women's FA Cup. This is one of those concurrent tournaments that occur across the Women's League in England. Both semifinals, 
Tottenham versus Leicester was played in front of 18,000 people, Lynn. That's awesome. Tottenham came from behind. They scored the game winner in extra time. Martha Thomas in the 118th minute made it 2-1 to one and sends Tottenham through to the FA Cup final at Wembley for the very first time. This goal for the Tottenham faithful. What was this goal like, Lynn? I need a hero. We got her singing. <laughs> I wish so badly I could sing. Like, if I had, if I could have another talent, that would be it. I know. I mean, I can sing. No, you cannot. (laughs) But it is one of your favorite things to do. It is one of my favorite things to do. I love it so much. The other semifinal game was Chelsea versus Man United. Chelsea came into this game having won the FA Cup for the last three years in a row. Back to back to back. Every year since 2021. But United came away with it. Man United have never beat Chelsea in all competitions before this, like literally ever, Lynn. And it was it was tough. Chelsea had 26 shots, eight on target, and 70% possession. They did get one goal from Lauren James at the end of the first half. But in the second half, they it was just one of those games where Chelsea was like doing everything they could, but Man United had packed it in. And you know when you just like can't score. Man United goalkeeper Mary Earps was lights out in net. When those games are happening, I know it's like so frustrating. And I think the longer it goes on, the harder and harder it gets to score. So with Chelsea trailing and Man United trying to go to the FA Cup final and trying to beat Chelsea for the first time, what does it feel like to play against a team like that that's just like defending for their life? Yeah, first of all, what a time to beat them. They couldn't have picked a better moment, I guess, for them. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of, like, Challenge Cup when we were playing Portland and Britt Eckerstrom had the game of her life. Don't remind me. I know. I could kill her. This is 2020, original Challenge Cup during COVID in Utah. Courage are playing Portland in the first knockout game, and we frickin' lose. Britt Eckerstrom had the game of her life. I could have killed her. She's a friend of ours, so I feel like I could say that. But it's it's just when those games happen, when you are getting chance after chance after chance, you are trying to score so badly, and they are having the best defensive moment of their lives. Of yep. Just every single thing you hit, it, it deflects off of them. I think you start to think it, it's like human nature just think like, well, it's just not our day. It's yeah. just not going to be our day. Like, it, one of them is not going to fall. I think there are days where you're like, we're getting every single lucky bounce. And then there's days where you're like, we can't catch a break. Yeah. And it's so frustrating. And to try to keep your head and keep your calm in those moments, I think, is hard to do. Not just take wild shots. I think that that's what you mm-hmm. start to see is people want to be the hero. And if you were to just continue to play your game and wait until something opens up, I feel like you would see teams have more success, but you start to just like get so emotional about it. You're like, I have to be the hero. I have to shoot. I have to score. And it's usually not the right shot. So I I do feel for them in that moment. I know. I do too. It's tough to see Chelsea, who just a couple weeks ago had a chance to win four trophies this year. Now they're down Mm -hmm. to two. It's been a tough, honestly, a tough and I think stressful time for Chelsea and head coach Emma Hayes, who's coming yeah. to coach the U.S. Women's National Team in just a few months. But props to Tottenham and Manchester United. We're going to have a first-time winner of the FA Cup, which I think speaks a lot to the growth of the women's game. I love yeah. seeing new clubs that have grown, that have fought their way to finals. That FA Cup final is going to be played at Wembley on May 12th. We will get you some analysis on that when we get a little bit closer to it. Have you ever played at Wembley? Yeah, I have. Did you play there? In 2020, when I first got to Man City, we like made the FA Cup final like right when I got there because it was like technically the season before's tournament. So I played Mm -hmm. in an FA Cup final. I scored a goal and it was at Wembley and there was no fans because it was COVID, but it was still like really, really cool. Dang. Have you played at Wembley? No. I can only imagine though that would be like on my bucket list or like dreams of places to play. Not during COVID, but like during regular. (laughs) But Sam, I just remember when you went over there, watching you play, I was like, this is a woman amongst girls. I feel like you were scoring goals left and right. I know. I was beasting it. (laughs) I was in full on beast mode. Dang. Well, that's exciting for everybody to play at Wembley. I wish I could. And I'm jealous of you again. Oh, 
Well, geez, thanks, Lynn. Coming up this weekend, Champions League resumes this weekend on Saturday, and you can watch for free on DAZN. Just sign up for a women's football account, and you'll have free access to Champions League plus Spanish, French, German, and Italian league football. Fall free. Fall free. <laughs> On Saturday, April 20th at 7.30 a.m. Eastern, it's the first leg, Barcelona hosts Chelsea. Barcelona are the current title holders, and they feature tons of top-tier internationals, including English defender Lucy Bronze, Norwegian Caroline Graham Hansen, and not to mention Spanish World Cup winners Salma Perayueo, Alexia Pateas, and Ballon d'Or winner Eitana Bonmati. Jeez. Barcelona are stacked. Sometimes, though, just got to play with some heart. You can beat the stack teams. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta play with some art. And they, are, Barcelona, are squaring off against Chelsea, who have just lost their FA Cup chances as well as Conti Cup, and perhaps now have something to prove. They only have two titles left in play for soon to party manager Emma Hayes. So this matchup is going to be a must watch. Barcelona also beat Chelsea in last year's Champions League semifinal, and now they're here for a rematch. Lynn, if you're Chelsea. Does last year's loss, like, give you extra motivation? Are you excited for the opportunity to play Barcelona? Or are you kind of like, oh, my God, damn it, we got Barcelona again? I don't think it's just last year, but I think it's the fact that they have dropped two other titles that would give, personally, me the motivation to be like, we cannot drop another one. And then the cherry on top of that, I think, is actually playing one of the best teams in club soccer Mm. I think that if you want to be at the top you have to beat some of the best players and Mm. I think that that's more satisfying than anything so if I'm Chelsea I'm I'm looking at it like we we can't lose again yeah like it's it's an even better opportunity because it's Barcelona because it's like this would really cement us as like being so good and deserving this and I think that it would it's not necessarily going to change the fact that they have dropped two titles but it's gonna it's going to feel better. It's going to be like, okay, we are not only going to be hopefully, hopefully be the best team Mm -hmm. and and the top players, but we also kind of get to rectify our wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? I agree. I think it's like the only thing that could like make you feel better is like winning champions league. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty, it'd be pretty, pretty sick. So This is just the first leg of two legs in the semifinal. Chelsea would have to beat Barcelona in over both legs and then play in the final as well. So we can watch this first game on Saturday morning, 7.30 a.m. on DAZN. Set your alarms, get some coffee. We'll walk our dogs at halftime. It's going to be fine. Then later that day at 1 p.m. Eastern, it's the first leg of Lyon versus Paris Saint-Germain. This French-on-French battle kind of reminds me, Lynn, I've been making this joke all week, Alfie versus Gabrielle from Emily in Paris. Do you like that? Yeah, that was good. Thank you. How did you come up with that? Just by being obsessed with Emily in Paris. This game is headlined by Lyon midfielder and our pal, Lindsay, Linda Haran, who helped Lyon win the Champions League two years ago. But PSG have a strong squad, actually led by Temwa Chewinga's sister, Tabitha Chewinga, who scarily is just as fast No, I had no idea. So thank you so much for telling me. You're so welcome. We're going to be joined next week by an all-new correspondent who is going to help us fill you in on all the big info that we need to hear before the second leg of both of these very big matchups. So again, tune in on this Saturday on DAZN. It is free. That's very cool. We also have some real clashes in the NBCL this weekend, including Lynn's Gotham are taking on the Washington Spirit. Lynn, is this an Eastern Seaboard rivalry? Uh, yeah, because all the teams that we play against are rivalries. Oh, I like Hot that. Hot take here. Hot take. <laughs> you heard it here from Lynn. All the teams they play are rivalries. We also have Bay at Kansas City. This game might end up being 10 to 9. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a game that people want to watch. <laughs> if you're a fan of goals, you might want to tune into that game. Yeah, so we looked this up. Kansas City has 12 goals for and 8 goals against in four games. Bay has seven goals for and seven goals against in four games. That's 34 goals. That's a lot of goals. So I'm excited to watch this one. It's circled on my calendar. So that (laughs) Bay-Kansas City game is Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Then we have the Houston Dash at Portland. Lynn, do you think that Portland can finally find their form against a Dash that may be losing their key signing? 
I think they can. I think that Portland, when I watch them play, they're obviously going through something, but they have enough players with experience on that team that should be able to work it out. I we are still very early on in the season, so yeah. I'm thinking that they're gonna they're gonna pull this one through. And then the dash, obviously, we don't know what's going on there, but yeah. I wish them all the best. Yeah, kind of. That dash Portland game is Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern. Rage, and then on Sunday night at 7:30 p.m. Eastern, we have Angel City at North Carolina Courage. I feel like Wakeman is like such a fortress for North Carolina. They're now unbeaten in 12 straight home matches. And that's the longest streak since a 17-game unbeaten streak in 2018 and 2019, which we did, Lynn. So I guess just do it six more times, Courage, and then we can talk. (laughs) (laughs) And then you'll be as good as us. Just kidding. (laughs) And so Angel City Courage. Uh, I'm thinking Courage. I mean, I think they're going to make this unbeaten streak probably 13. I'm thinking so, too. I feel like the Courage right now have found their groove early on and... It's almost as if they, like, the new people have just slid right in and yes. have done so well. Any, like, transition. So we'll see. I'm going to tune in and check it out. Tune in and check it out, folks. All right, let's go to the inbox. I'm really excited for this one, Lynn. I picked these out, you guys, and this one, I didn't have to look very far. We got an email from Bethany F. that says, Very important question for everyone. What is your favorite chain restaurant and what is your order? Mine is the Cheesecake Factory and I always get the cheeseburger egg rolls. My birthday staple, LOL. Thank you so much, Bethany F. I want to answer for Lynn. Lynn, can I answer for you? Because I think I know what you're going to say. Yes, but also I don't even know what a cheeseburger egg roll is. Do you know what that is? Yeah, they're from the Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, definitely. Definitely know. (laughs) I know what Mm -hmm. they are. I think I, you know what I think I used to get the Cheesecake Factory? The Philly Cheesecake Egg Rolls. I used to get the avocado egg rolls, so we're all eggheads. Egg. <laughs> but you know what I was going to say for you, Lynn? Tell me. That I know you really like are the cheddar biscuits from Red Lobster. <sighs> Don't you? I freaking love those things. I know you do. You guys, I love Red Lobster. I haven't gone in forever. It does make my stomach hurt. But what <laughs> doesn't make my stomach hurt? <laughs> But those things, I don't know what they're putting in those biscuits, but it's delicious. They're putting in some butter. They're putting in some cheese. Some bread. Some, some well, garlic, maybe. Ooh, yeah. You can't, you really can't go wrong. What do you think, when you think of me in chain restaurants, what do you think? When I, Well, first of all, when I think of you, I don't think chain restaurant. Mm. I think of you as a, like a mom and pop shop kind of gal. Okay, like an independent restaurant kind of gal. Yes, but if if I were to pick something, it would be a pizza chain, and I cannot think of that. I do love pizza. I, I know. If I do. if I had to like the when I read this question, the first question that came to my mind was Buffalo Blasts from the Cheesecake Factory because the question plugged Cheesecake Factory, and I don't know if you guys have ever had Buffalo Blasts, but <laughs> <laughs> I just had a buffalo chicken sandwich yesterday, and it's freaking delicious. So good. If I was to pick a chain restaurant for myself, like a, a, a strawberry lemonade from Cheesecake Factory, like, come on. I know. I don't think I've, like, gone to, like, a restaurant like that in a really long time. When I'm thinking of, like, chain restaurants, I'm thinking, like, Cava and, like, Chipotle. Oh, yeah, that's fair. A little fast casual action. Yeah. Well, I freaking love this question, Bethany F. Me and Lynn will probably offline about this one after we're done with this episode so we can just chit-chat about food some more. I need to, like, go to Red Lobster, though. Like, I... I'm getting up in there. Go get some biscuits. Go get some biscuits. (laughs) Okay, sadly, that brings us to the end of our episode. It's sad. Lynn, I don't want to leave you, and I don't want to leave all of our friends who are listening. I know, but sadly, we have to. And But before we do that, we're going to give good vibes. We are. My good vibe, I'm probably stealing yours. The sun just poked out. I'm going to take my dog on a little walk. And I'm really excited to get my steps in. Yeah. Yeah, girlfriend. And you did say I think your very first good vibe was, hold on, everybody. Seasonal depression. Seasonal depression is going to end soon. Spring is coming. The sun is coming. Boy, was I wrong. (laughs) We had to wait a long time. But it has finally come, and hopefully it's here to stay. 
my good vibe is not going to be about food this time. <laughs> it's going to be, I really feel like I sometimes, don't get me wrong, I love a couch rot and I love like staying in the house and not just staying in my pajamas all day. But I feel really good when I just get up and shower and like put on nice clothes. And mm -hmm. like even if it's just like to go on a walk or go to the grocery store or something. So I would say just get up and like get dressed. Get, get up dressed and up. shower, y'all. Just get up and shower and get dressed, everybody. Get up, shower. You guys are filthy. According to Lynn, <laughs> it's going to make us all feel better. Honestly, tell me it won't. I stand by that. I, I'm not. I'm not telling you anything. I'm all for a shower. I'm also all for a couch day. If you have to shower and then go lay on your couch, I like that idea. All right, we're not telling you guys what to do, but we have to go. That is it for this week's episode of Good Vibes <laughs> FC. I hope you're subscribed. If you're not, please subscribe right now, you little sponge cake. It's available wherever you listen to podcasts, and we're on YouTube. Don't forget, you guys can watch our little faces on YouTube if you just go to our YouTube channel. At Women's Game MIB, we're also on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on TikTok. Follow us, Women's Game MIB. This week on Friendlies, we have an awesome interview with Thorns midfielder Jessie Fleming. We talked all about her decision to leave Chelsea and come to Portland. We talked about how she's able to score PKs in moments of extreme high pressure, like at the Olympics. And we even talk a little bit about the lawsuit that's going on with the Canadian Federation. That's airing on Thursday, so get it in your feed. Make sure you're subscribed. Do whatever you have to do. Jesse Fleming. All right, everybody, that's it. Goodbye. I'm Lynn. And I'm Sam Mewis, and this is Good Vibes FC, the podcast that's like Bohemian Rhapsody because it's just different and weird every week, but it's just such a classic, and everybody knows it and everybody loves it. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>